Hello and welcome to Die Rolling. I'm the ever excitable Adam and today I'm unboxing Deranged by Ultra Pro Entertainment and published by Hobby World. Uh, this is a gothic semi-cooperative adventure survival game for three to six players as it says right down here. I know that because I read it. I absolutely love the artwork on this game um, and this is a review copy we've been sent so thank you very much for sending this to us. Um, just really love the artwork. This is what basically drew me to uh, reaching out to these guys for this because it just looks so cool. Um, so the general idea is it's a deck building game where you are trying to remove a curse from yourself whilst also battling various different monsters around the area. So you're going to go against werewolves and that kind of thing. So uh, nothing on the inside but it's a nice black inside nice finish on there normally when we un unbox games it's just got a kind of just regular cardboard but they've thought about the inside of the box nice lovely and shiny there so we've got the rules themselves let's take a look so on the back sure reference guys always get a thumbs up from me for doing that kind of thing um and yeah lovely artwork all throughout components set up here um so we've got quite quite a few pages in this and it looks like it's a lot of information um so okay so you've got about about 12 pages worth of um of rules to look at before you get into like a more advanced version of the game um some extra rules here and then some facts at the back great nice nice rule book uh looks like there's lots there uh, for me to read um okay and then we've got some tokens here so I'll just get into this, hopefully. No time whatsoever. So here we go. Take a look. Um, so we've got um, loads of like nice tokens there. Some like candlesticks. Um, punch out pretty easy. Nice kind of thickness on there. Um, you've got this kind of like building tile on there as well. Nice. And then this is the board itself. So the board comes into f in four different tiles. Um, so we've got uh, this side. And then, uh, that side as well. There's some more tokens there for you to punch out. And then we've got this next one. These are just coming out very easily. And then the next one. And then finally our last tile here, our last board piece. Um, but yeah, absolutely love this. The artwork is so nice. Um, great job there. And of course we've got all these things to punch out. Uh, then we've got some cardboard. I think this is just to kind of stop all the other pieces coming out. So let's take a look at what else we get. So you get these uh, sun and moon kind of dial things here. There's two of those. And then we've got your kind of players kind of tracking information on here as well. Uh, and these are pre-assembled, so you don't have to like build them yourself, which is interesting. Um, so we've got that there. We've got this guy. Uh, this guy who I believe is the librarian because he's down here. And like a kind of a lady there. Uh, this woman. And finally, this kind of, this looks like a kind of mystic kind of character. Okay, and the miniatures themselves. So it comes with miniatures. They're not pre-painted or anything, um, but really nice detail on there. You could do a really good job with these. They're, they're nice. They are very detailed on that. You could, honestly, you could do a really nice job with that with a little bit of paint. Um, there's the Mystic. Oh. And the Librarian. But yeah, the Lady I mentioned. This dude with a gun. And finally, this lady, he's, looks like she's running away with the keys. 
Really nice uh, poses on these miniatures. And then you've got six of the same deranged miniatures here. So this is when the curse gets the best of you, I believe, and you get turned into one of these guys. Um, so it's semi-cooperative in the sense that you are trying to uh, remove the curses altogether. Um, but at some point, you could actually turn into one of the bad guys. So let's take a look at uh, these cards here. Uh, this is not an easy open kind, so it's taking me a little bit of effort to get to work these out of their cellophane uh, prison. And I've done it. Well done, me. So let's take a look. So um, we've got uh, Alfred Winthrop. Nothing frightened young Alfred quite as much as the monsters in his favourite horror novels. Woodberg would teach him to laugh at those old fears by showing him what true horror was. And then we've got a turn overview on the back there. The adventurer, Samuel Wilfried, always ready to explore and quench his thirst for adventure. It was the town of Woodburg that taught him, perhaps too late, that some parts of this world do not appreciate the overly curious. And once again, same thing on the back. Uh, we got Thomas Waltz, the merchant. The smallest towns had the biggest needs, and those sales are what sustained him and his family. The irony that the town of Woodburg would demand a higher price was not lost on him. The widow, Annalisa von Eisenhaus. After the death of her beloved husband, she went travelling to heal her broken heart. Staying for the night in Woodburg, she did not suspect that her heart could literally be torn from her chest. And then we've got a guide all on here. So it tells you all the stats and what they get up to. Uh, we get a hungry ghost. Uh, we have the seer, Yan Lin. When exploring the darkest secrets of a foreign land, many people end up paying with their own lives. She has peered into the deepest darkness and will always pay with someone else's life. Okay. Uh, we have the lady, Susan Bernard. This mischievous heiress had no desire to conform to her lady's boring expectation. Sorry, her family's boring expectations. In the town of Woodburg, with no one to trust, she wished for boring again. The lady, Susan Bernard. And then we have the walking dead. So we have a necromancer. Uh, we got werewolves. We have enraged werewolves. And then we have the scenario cards. So these cards come out uh, over the course of the adventure. Um, and they've all got things on the back, which I don't really want to reveal because they kind of give away plot points here. But we've got a couple of scenarios in here. So we have uh, chapter one, the first day, the first night, the second day. Um, but yeah, so you've you've got the you've got all the the first day, the, the first night. So it's played over a series of days and nights. Um, so we've got the unknown there. Uh, we've got a marauding band, and then finally behind closed doors. So they are the all of the little um, kind of scenarios you have in this game, which you go through. And then we have these cards here. So. Once again, I'm trying to get it praise these guys out of out of their um, oh, oh, tricky to get these out. Okay, so um, these are exactly what they say on the tin. These are curse cards. Um, so you get a bunch of different curse cards. Uh, discard this curse in these locations. When this curse is revealed, a hungry ghost is placed on the place of power in the quarter. Discard this curse on the ruins of, or in the abandoned church. You're deranged. Um, so yeah, you've got lo loads of different curses here. Like a whole, whole kind of deck of curse cards there. So that's quite cool. And it goes nicely back into the box there, which is pretty good. Uh, and then... We'll get to the cards in a second. We've got, oh, look at this, a bunch of baggies for the tokens. Um, the game tray itself is really nice because you've got lots of places you can store stuff, which is good. And you've got these little tokens to put around the bases of your characters, um, which I probably will try to match. If I do paint these, I'll probably try to match these guys to particular color bases 
Um, that would be cool. Right, let's take a look at the cards themselves. So action cards, there's item cards, there's reward cards, roll cards, and scenario effect cards. See if I can get into these first. Okay, so um, let's have take a look at the action cards first of all. Um, well, these are action cards. There's also item cards in here and reward cards. Um, so, got an amulet. Um, without playing the game, I'm not quite sure what these things do, so what these values are on the left and things like that. Um, but just really appreciate the lovely artwork on here. Um, it really does give you a nice sense of theme. Uh, but yeah, you get a ton of items, uh, well, cards in here. So yeah, you got all of those. And then we've got a bunch of other cards in here. So we have knight cards in here, uh, which play the knight, we have a grimoire, magic satchel, to the candles, a caress, the fog, night mission, blend of us again. Survivor's Diary. So yeah, you get a bloody axe. Nice. That looks really, uh, really painful. Um, so yeah, so you get a ton of stuff in here. Really nice cards. Really nice artwork on all this stuff. Um, lovely production values. So uh, I am very excited about getting this to the table with the other die rollers. Uh, unfortunately, this is a three to six play game, so I will not be able to do this solo or play with shows on this one. So this is going to have to wait till we have got all back together again. Um, and I'm just gonna put these back in just to see how this all fits in. And it looks like it fits in very nicely. Um, yeah, you've got room for everything in here. So uh, that was me unboxing Deranged, um, the board game there. Uh, if this looks like something that you're interested in, then please stay tuned to our channel because we will be doing a full gameplay session of this. Um, and we'll see if we can manage to become uh, uncursed in Deranged. Thanks for watching this. Um, if you like this, then please leave some comments and subscribe to our various social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, and of course, YouTube. Until next time, I've been the ever-excitable Adam, and stay safe and keep rolling.